Sisters and brothers in Christ, welcome to worship here at St. Timothy's on the 5th of July. We're happy to have you join us. I hope you had a safe and happy 4th celebration. Now, as we come to worship this day, um, I am just returning from being away for a few days myself, and I'm so happy to introduce you to our guest preacher. Today is Pastor Linda Walls, who serves as a chaplain at Emmanuel Communities right here in Omaha, and uh, maybe you've met her before. We're always glad to welcome her back to St. Timothy's. Today, she's going to focus on a story that's pretty familiar to us, I think. It's the story of Zacchaeus. So today, let's think about how God enters into our lives, comes into our spaces, and uh, mindful of the ways that we have perhaps fallen short of welcoming our God, let's together join in these words of confession. Gracious God, like Zacchaeus, we can be quick to prioritize the wrong things, to-do lists over family time, success over a relationship with you, wealth over generosity. We have lost sight of what really matters. Forgive us for our lack of vision Call us back to the life you long for us to lead. May we delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you and for his sake. God forgives you all your sin as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority. I'm here to remind you that you are a beloved child of God and in the name of Jesus Christ, your sin are forgiven. God.
As we are gathered together, please join with me in the call to worship. God is with us today. For God longs to be in relationship with us. God is with us today. For God loves the sinners and the saints. God is with us today. For God sees all, claims all, and loves all. God is with us today. Now is the time to worship God. Please join with me in prayer. Lord of our richest encounters, you heard the hidden cry of Zacchaeus to welcome you into his home. Teach us to hear the whispers of the world, to feel its pain, to see who you see. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel for this day comes into our midst, as does Christ, in the words and witness of the Gospel of Luke, the 19th chapter. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, because Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to, to that place, he looked up and he said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. Now all who saw it began to grumble and said, he's gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Oh, sisters and brothers, grace to you and peace from our living God, who was and who is and who is coming again, and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Unraveled. That's the theme around which you have been working these past several weeks, and I've been invited to unpack the Zacchaeus story in light of this theme. Now, as I was thinking about him this week, I found myself wanting to get to the unraveled parts of the story before I acknowledged the tangledness or the tangled mess of it. Because the truth is, this story ensnares me. I had an image of Zacchaeus as I began thinking about him this week. He was a tax collector, and like his contemporaries, I found little to commend him. I thought of him as they did. He got rich off of the backs of people he had exploited. He was a collaborator with Rome, a sworn enemy of Israel. And he was indeed, as the song says, a wee little man. That had nothing at all to do with his stature. It had everything to do with the steps he took to protect and enrich and ingratiate himself. I found myself caught up in the utter paradox of Zacchaeus' name. In Hebrew, the name Zacchaeus means righteous or pure or innocent. And he was none of those. It's not unlike someone whom we know who might be named Christian or Grace, and yet whose lives seem to be lived in ways opposite 
of what their names are supposed to mean. I identified with those who had been on the other side of what I saw as Zacchaeus graft and profit and exploitation at their expense for the sake of an oppressor. At least, that's where I would like to have seen myself. But, but then I see where I have become entangled in a kind of self-righteousness that vilifies another person in order to elevate myself. And in the process, I discover that I am left standing right alongside of that person I have vilified. Here's the mess. As soon as I point my fingers and begin to judge and begin to see myself as an imaginary victim of a story that is not mine, the relationships get all convoluted. I begin to put myself in one camp or another as though it is my right. And it isn't. As quickly as I rush to judge Zacchaeus, or more truthfully, his modern-day contemporaries who absolutely enrich themselves at the expense of others, well, my hypocrisy begins to show. Because I am forced to confess that I see some of Zacchaeus in me. I value some of the things that he valued. A little extra money in the checkbook or retirement account. A little cushion, just in case. And in with the people in power. It is so much easier to dislike or judge Zacchaeus when we think he is different from us. He isn't. And I would dare say that that is also true for the people who were around him. If we can somehow other those who trouble us, it is much easier to judge them and condemn them and hate them. And yet in the process, we diminish all of humanity. It is a tangled mess. Our relationships with each other we, we are so rarely interested in seeing the connections that exist between us because, honestly, it is easier to see the barriers. It is expedient to other. Jesus doesn't let us go there. The paradox of Jesus is that he will not allow us to other each other. He unravels our relationships precisely because he calls us to see just how deeply we are connected to others. How intertwined and reflective our lives are. And if we are to see Jesus as the crowds around him sought to do and as Zacchaeus sought to do, we have to begin by recognizing that Jesus sees us, all of us. In these crazy days in which we are living, Jesus lays claim and extends his invitation to all those who
whom we would isolate and ostracize. It means that Jesus claims the mask wearers and the ones who refuse to wear them. Although, I tend to think he'd encourage us to wear them. Jesus absolutely and rightly stands with those who understand the particularity of the Black Lives Matter movement. But he will not disown those who resist or undermine it. Dang it, but Jesus embraces people all over the political spectrum, even if it is much to our chagrin. He is absolutely among those who are oppressed and suffering and hated. But he refuses to give up on the oppressor and the pain inflictor and the hater. Jesus' vision for this world unravels how we see it and live in it. He, he takes the threads of our division, of our brokenness, of our sin, and he reweaves a new tapestry, a new vision, a new creation. Jesus informed the crowds that Zacchaeus too, was a child of Abraham and Sarah. He, too, was an heir of God's promises, a recipient of the covenant, a beloved creation. And if we are to see Jesus as the crowd and as Zacchaeus sought to do, then we are to see each other as Jesus sees us, beloved, holy, redeemed. Jesus unravels our judgments of each other. He tears down our ways of building walls and barriers. And in their place, he constructs a beloved community. Amen.
Friends, today I invite you to confess the faith we share using some images of what our unraveled moments mean and imagining how God is at work bringing healing and hope. I believe in God, who weaves us together in community, collecting our loose ends and turning them into belonging. I believe in the Holy Spirit, who hems us in before and behind, catching us when we fall, and writing us into God's holy narrative. And I believe in Jesus Christ, who loved and claimed the people society had thrown out, refusing to disregard anyone as scrap. I believe God is woven into the fiber of our being and makes us worthy of love and belonging. I believe the fabric of my life is weak that I need God's handiwork to make me anew. I believe that the church, like a quilt made of many fabrics, is designed to be a beautiful instrument of God's healing. And I believe that when life unravels, God is there to stitch my wounds together and to invite me to journey in this faith again. Amen. Amen. United with the saints of every time and place, let us now pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Merciful God, you sent your Son to seek out and save the lost. Give us vision to seek your power and glory in unexpected places and people. Hear us, O God. Creator God, you have made everything good we thank you for sycamore trees and birches for rivers and meadows for stars and amoebas and for all that allows us to see you and know you more clearly hear us O oh god god of all the nations you raise up leaders to govern give us clear vision and a spirit of wisdom and empower those who are elected to serve to bring justice and harmony to the nation. Hear us, O oh God. Compassionate God, you are a hiding place for all in trouble. Reveal yourself to those who are oppressed, to those who are widowed, orphaned, to those who have endured persecution, to all who mourn, and to those who are sick. Hear us, O oh God. We give you thanks for all the saints who have gone before us. Let their faithful witness renew us and set our hope on you, Christ Jesus, our Lord. You taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus invites us to come from our own sycamore trees to see him and to see him in our neighbors. May he be where you are. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look on you with favor and grant you peace. Amen.
Say, yeah. Blessed are the poor in spirit. 